something so I can welcome the participants to the meeting and uh, thank them for being resilient and being here. I'm sure it is an interesting uh, process. Uh, I'm also learning a lot and I'm sure you're also learning a lot. Just to let you know uh, that uh, afterwards, these courses are going to be put on the forum platform and they can always be available for your universities and for the other students that uh, are part of uh, the Ruforum network or part of the university process in Africa. So thank you very much and that welcome Professor Ashley and his team uh, for, for being resilient as well and putting up the, 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 the courses. Uh, we do welcome all of you and thank you Professor Majaliwa uh, for the coordination. I, uh, I wish you beautiful, uh, deliberations and training. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Florence. Dr. Florence is the Deputy Executive Secretary of Roof Forum. Uh, uh, Prof. Ashil, uh, good, good afternoon. I know uh, even your side is uh, 12.05. Uh, are you ready? Yes, it is 1.05 here. Good, oh, good afternoon, everyone. And good, okay. good evening to you, Prof. Majaliwa, Florence, and colleagues <laughs> from Eastern <laughs> Africa. <laughs> thank you very much. Go ahead, sir. So you have the microphone. Okay, okay. thank you. Today, it is uh, the third day, I think. Then we are in the good, uh, on the right way. Eh? We will combine two sessions today, the one of uh, the economic assessments of indigenous tree-based agroforestry systems. Following what we had yesterday on ecosystem services assessment, evaluation on carbon uh, assessment in agroforestry tree-based uh, systems. And uh, now we will start uh, with this economic assessment and following thereafter by the one on domestication of species on three species in the traditional agroforestry systems. Uh, then one hour, maybe a maximum for the first session today on economic assessment by Dr. Gracias Avacujo. He is a doctor in forest ecology, natural resources management, and also an expert in climate change. He is uh, an, al an alumni of WASCAL program. And then after, after Dr. Salako, uh, who presented yesterday on ecosystem services and carbon uh, assessments, will follow with the tree domestication. Then we are here together for all and then please participate you can at the same time of uh, during the presentation send your questions in the uh, in the chats and then after we can come back to you then uh, dr abakujo you have the floor for maximum one hour and then uh, following uh, we will have uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Salako. Thank you, and please go ahead. Thank you, uh, Prof. Asabajo. Thank you, Dr. Florence, and thank you, Prof. Majaliwa and dear colleague. Welcome to today's presentation. Uh, we are in the third day of uh, presenting our model on indigenous tree-based agroforest system. And today's session, will, I will be presenting on the economic assessment of the indigenous tree-based agroforest system. The, sorry, second. Can you see my screen, please? It is because it's not moving at my side, sorry. Yes, we can see your screen. Okay. Mm. You, you kindly put it on presentation mode. Yeah. 
what I'm doing. So the, the aim of this session is that at the end of it, the participant will learn the tools uh, that can help them to assess the economic value of the indigenous tree-based agroforest systems. And we have different uh, learning outcome from this, uh, this session. The very first one is to explain the importance of indigenous tree for agroforest system, the resilient and their adaptation for local community to climate change. The second outcome is to understand the robust planning to guide the successful adoption, removal of constraint for practicing agroforestry. And the third one is to provide expert guidance and technical assistance on indigenous tree-based agroforest system. So the session will be about two outline. The very first one is how to evaluate the economic value of the indigenous tree and agroforest system. And the second one is to assess the cost benefit value of indigenous tree and agroforest system. For the delivery uh, mode, the lecture will be interactive and uh, group discussion with individual work also can be done. If possible, uh, feed work also can be done to help the, the participant to identify the different components in the agroforest system and to choose a right method to assess uh, the different components. For the teaching and learning material, video projector, computer, whiteboard, marker, flip chart, pointer also will be needed. And for to assess the model, uh, group and individual reports will be needed. And also uh, the lecturer is encouraged to provide some key literature to the participant so that they can easily understand one or another thing about the economic assessment. To introduce uh, this topic, let's say that uh, the economic assessment is easy when it comes to normal goods and services, but when it comes to environmental goods, and service, it is, it is quite difficult because they are not in the market system. So how to measure and value the, 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 these resources like biodiversity or the biodiversity within the uh, tree agroforest system, it is what we are going to deal with today. So to start the, 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 the lecture, you, as a lecturer, you can just uh, show this picture to the participants and ask them uh, who can calculate the monetary value of such a system. As you can see in the picture, there are uh, different kind of crops and uh, also different trees in the system. So when you ask that question, the, you can give the, uh, the participant a uh, three to five minutes to, to think and discuss among themselves and uh, come out with some idea of how they are going to do the, the calculation of, of uh, the economic value of this agroforestry system. But we have also to, to tell them that uh, while talking about the economic valuation of the uh, of indigenous agroforestry systems, it's not all about monetary value. It's not all about monetary value. 
it, there are a lot of other value that we have to be taken into consideration. And environmental or uh, natural resource economics is just the application of the principle of economy to study uh, the, the systems, the uh, environmental system like agroforestry system, for example. So how to make a price for non-market resources like agroforestry system? To be able to, to value uh, uh, this agroforestry system, the very first thing to know is the notion of value. What does value mean? What does value mean? And according to a classic economic theory, you have to explain to them what it means. But when, when it comes to uh, uh, resources like agroforestry system, you also need to highlight that it is very suggestive because uh, it is, it, it, the, the measure depends on the economic agent that is, is doing it. What is important for me within a system cannot be important to you or cannot be valuable to you. So it depends on the preference of the economic uh, agent that is making the, the measurement. So uh, they have to, to keep in mind that it is less objective, it's very subjective when it comes to deal with economic assessment of uh, uh, environmental resources like agroforestry systems. Also, you need to explain that the in the valuation of, of uh, this indigenous tree-based agroforest system, they have to know that it is not all about monetary value, as I was saying. It is divided into use and no use value. And the, we can know the value of a system from the satisfaction that uh, someone is is getting from, from that particular system. So in this table, we have, it is the how to, to know the total economic value of uh, a system. How can we know the different components that have to be taken into consideration when we want to, to know the total economic value of a given system. And as I was saying, the total economic value is divided into two broad categories. The very first one is the use value. And the second one is the no use value. And in the use value, we have uh, the direct value, for example, uh, the recreation benefits that I'm getting from uh, uh, a given system, or uh, a number of uh, the quantity of fruit that I'm getting from a, a tree in the system, or the number of liter of honey that I'm harvesting from uh, my agroforest system. That is the direct use value. And we also have the indirect use value, which is more linked to eco ecosystem functional benefits like watershed production, timber production, et cetera. And we also have the option value, which is safeguard of use benefit, like uh, pharmaceutical, med med medicinal uh, 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 benefit, and uh, future visit that I can make in my system. That are option, those one are option value. And now we come to the no use value, which encompasses the crest value, which is the legacy benefits like habitat conservation for future generation and the existence value, which is much, much linked to the intrinsic benefit of the system. For example, 
knowledge of uh, continued protest, continued protection of the wildlife biodiversity. So, to know the total economic value of uh, this indigenous tree-based agroforest system, we just need to sum up the direct value and the uh, indirect value, the uh, use, uh, the use and no use value. So here, the, the total economic value can be the sum of the use value, the existence value, the option value, the because value, as we have already said. This being said, you can come up with some pictures to ask this, uh, the participant, now that they are aware about uh, what uh, what are the different components of, of an agroforest system, because we were taught that in the very first day. And also, we now also talk about the different category or the different aspect to take into consideration when we want to, uh, to assess the economic value of a system. You can just ask them to, to tell you the different uh, component of, of the system that you show and also to give the no use and the use value of that system. They will think about it. You can put them into group or give it as a home uh, assignment and they will go, they will work and come back with uh, the, some results. So you can also uh, sorry. This is another system also that you can project them to ask how they are going to assess it by identifying the different components, but also by giving the different uh, use and non-use uh, uh, value of that system. Obviously, you will see that the, the participant will miss everything. There will be a miss of use and non-use value in their classification. There will, the, the, the different components will vary the identification will vary from one group to another, and the classification of the different uses also will vary from one group to another. This is another uh, uh, system also on which they can do the same exercise. Their answer, uh, you don't have to reject what they have said because even among the, the the economists or the scientists, they debate, they are still debating about, about how to, to, to compute or how to assess the economic value of a, a natural system like agroforest system. And here is a, uh, a typology given by Bad and Bad in 1992. And for him, the total economic value is composed of total use value and existence value. Remember that the very first that I presented, I said that it was about use value and no use value. But here, he said that it is about use value and existence value. And the use value are now separate into two, the real use value and the potential use value. So you can see that what was put in under uh, the non-use value, like Baker's va a value, is now here under potential use value. Another one come up, Pierre, Peace and Moran in 1993, they said they came back to the very first uh, typology, but uh, saying that it is composed of uh, use value and no use value. But under the use value, they separated into two the direct 
use value and the ecological function value, which make the difference with the previous one. And under the no use value, they have option value, existence value, and bequest value. In 2008, the Center of uh, Analysis, uh, Strategic Analysis, uh, used the very first typology, but now put emphasis up on the tan how tangible is it when we want to evaluate the or to assess the economic uh, importance of our system. And they say that the value of the different components in the system uh, are high when it comes to uh, direct use value, but become less tangible when it comes to uh, a non-use value like a, a legacy value and existence value. In 2010, Pasquale and collaborator give a typology. And what we have to keep in mind here is that definitely a total economic value is composed of use and non-use value. But under the non-use value, they brought two new things, which is the philanthropic value and the altruist to biodiversity. And there, the bequest value and the altruist value are under the philanthropic uh, 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 philanthropic value, and the existing value is seen as altruism to biodiversity. This being said, you can now ask the the the, the student to give you the reason according to them, why we should uh, make an assessment, economic assessment of agroforest system, for example, and which method have to be applied for that. We can give them that, that exercise, they can work in group and come up with some results they will present. And then after their presentation, you can just put on phase you can just stress on a certain point. So, for example, some of the reason why we should value the, uh, the give a value to our agroforest system is when it enables us to to uh, know what it enables us to know the cost benefit of the system. So it helps us to do the cost benefit analysis. And also it helps us to take into consideration environmental damages in measuring the economic performance. It also helps us to know the environmental benefits of a given program. Like when at a country level, we have um, a program to, to promote agroforestry system, for example, this can uh, doing the economic assessment will help us to see if a program is doing well. And the method to use to do the economic assessment are indirect methods and direct methods. I will be giving now a summary of some economic value assessment. And you as a lecturer or as trainer, you have to provide the student uh, some material as I was saying. Here I put uh, a one, it is a book, and you can ask them to go and read the, this different chapter to reflect on those chapter and bring what they think about the, 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 the methods that have to be used to uh, make 
the assessment of agroforestry systems. Here is a table from the uh, chapter one of, of the book that I presented. And it shows us that the method to choose depends on what we want, for example, to assess. We cannot use the same methods everywhere. And uh, that is why we give a, 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 an, a, an assignment to the student to help them to identify the different components in the agroforest system because the economic assessment of the agroforest system is all about giving value to the different components of the system. So if, for example, you want to uh, do a risk assessment, for example, to see, uh, uh, you want to do a risk assessment, then there is a model that you have to, to use, which is the risk assessment model. If, for example, you want to, to estimate the profitability of a firm or enterprise by deriving indicator such as net present value or benefit cost ratio or internal rate of return, you have to go for a budget model. Or if, for example, you want to uh, see, to estimate the relationship uh, among variable under investigation for forecasting, policy or decision making in your agroforest system, you need to use econometric method. And also, if you want to see, for example, the, you want to do the non-market evaluation, you have to use a, a domain or contingent a, a, a model and to estimate the value for environmental good or service such as reduction of soil erosion or improving water quality. Here is another paper where the, the methods for valuing uh, ecosystem services provided by agroforest asset at farm scale with example of how they might be applied in the farmer when the farmer is considered as the first benef primary beneficiary. And here again, you can see that the, depending on what you want to assess, you have to choose the method accordingly. If you want to assess, for example, the wood, the, uh, the, 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 the fruit, the, the timber, the fiber or the carbon sequestration of your system, then you have to look for direct market valuation. But if you want to rather look at the, the uh, pollination, for example, or the regulation of the regulation of temperature of and humidity in your system, or the transpiration, the wind protection, then you have to go for a production function. If you want to see, for example, uh, the service that what can uh, the replacement, if you, you can also look at the replacement cost, like uh, pollination, pest control, uh, the and see, for example, what is the contribution of uh, the agroforestry system in, uh, like, if there was no agroforestry system, what will be the state of your farm, for example, and what you can use or what can you put as like money to replace the, the role that the agroforestry system is playing. You can go for, for example, replacement costs. You can also 
use the, if you want to look at the use or no use value of a broad range of, of services, you can use the contingent of choice experiments. So remember yesterday, Dr. Salako was telling us that when you want to do the uh, ecosystem services assessment, you need to clearly define the indicator. It is the same thing here. When you want to, to, to do the economic assessment, you need to, to know what you are going to put your value in. What is valuable to you? And it is based on that that you will choose the correct method to do your assessment. I will now be presenting some case study from, uh, from Africa and elsewhere. Uh, and we will see that also, depending on the different objective, the method used differ. <clears throat> Here is an example of the estimation of economic value of agroforest system in Sudan. And from that example, we can see that the total economic value method was applied to determine the eco ecosystem value of the agroforest system. And the main direct marketable and sustainable high value products in the system in, 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 in Sudan included food, cash crop, firewood, gum, fodder, uh, non-timber forest products such as medicine, fodder, and honey. And from the, the study, they found out that agroforest system in the study site showed the way to reconcile two conflicting goals, short-term food and livelihood needs with long-term uh, uh, environmental conservation and improvement. In this table of, uh, of that paper, we can see that they try to, to give a total score and to give a rank to the preference of the uh, people that they survey about the total economic value of agroforest system. And you can see in the first column that it, they try to separate the marketable value and the non-marketable value. The marketable value include the food crops, the cash crop, the firewood, the Arabic gum, the livestock feed, the non-timber forest product, honey, traditional medicine, and uh, the uh, non-marketable value include environmental improvement and protection, soil improvement, etc. So when you want to assess your agroforestry system, try to correctly define the different components and try to make a good categorization. That is very important. It's the very first step that you have to take. If you don't do it well, then you, you may do some error in your computing. Here they try to, to extrapolate the annual direct use value uh, uh, for the participant, uh, for the household that participated in the study. And we can also see here that they try to, to compute the direct use value and the non-direct uh, 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 non direct value, the no use value. Here also, they try to make a comparison and you will also see that the comparison is made between the marketable value, the non-marketable value. And on the first picture, we ask the student to give the monetary value of the entire system. And I was saying that it, it is not all about money. And these tables show us that things like 
shade, for example, cannot, uh, they cannot have, uh, we cannot put price on them. That is why you can see that it is zero, zero everywhere. Here is another, uh, another example where they try to, to look in the village what is the contribution of the non timber forest product to the income of the, of the people. And the objective was to see, to do the economic val valuation, both a subsistence and commercial of non timber forest product. And for that, they made a survey of one year using structure questionnaire. And they use different methods according to the service that they want to value. The service linked to the non timber forest product. Mm -hmm. They use a gross margin method to estimate the income derived from the exploitation of non timber forest product trade on the market with and without self-consumption. And for the subsistence value of the non-timber forest product like a firewood, they use indirect cost opportunity methods. And they also use a linear regression to estimate the constraints in allocating time and labor to non-timber forest product collection or cotton cultivation because in the area, people used to do cotton cultivation. And they also use linear regression to estimate the, the demand in, uh, in non-timber forest products. And at the end of the assessment, they find out that 11.5%. 45% of the total annual household income comes from uh, non timber forest products. And when they include self consumption and the economic value of the firewood that are collected just for, for, for use in the, house, in the houses, not for sale, then this. Uh, the contribution of the non-timber forest product in, increase from uh, a, from four four hundred twenty six dollar it moved to six hundred and seventy dollar. So from that uh, study, they found out that non-timber forest product in in that particular place can be considered as a normal good as it follows some economical uh, 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 rule. The more the household income increase, the more the non-timber forest product uh, 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 demand increase. But one thing that is very important that they found out from their, their study is that there is now a kind of substitution between the production of cotton and the collection of non-timber forest products because people are earning a lot from the collection of non-timber forest products like uh, uh, fruits and the, 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 the money that they are making from, from it is becoming, is keep increasing. So they are now putting more effort in going to collect those non-timber forest products rather than going to, to farm cotton. Here is another example where it is in Europe, they try to, to look at the economic, the productivity and the economic value of agroforestry system in different country. And what I want here us to keep in mind is that depending on what you want to assess, you choose your methods accordingly. Here, they use a network of five agroforest system and they try to investigate the, uh, 
the production, but also the the money the, the, that the system can bring. And they use cross margin indicator for the economic viability of the uh, assessment. And at the end of the day, they found out that agroforestry gross margin was lower in Denmark and compared to United Kingdom, it's what is shown in, in, the, in the table down. But when you combine the crop, uh, the, the crop production with the agroforestry uh, system, the, what comes from the agroforestry system, you see that the gross margin is positive. So agroforestry, uh, putting trees in the system is beneficial for the farmer. So uh, briefly, it is what I would like to share with you about uh, the economic assessment of a uh, non-timber uh, of uh, indigenous tree based agroforestry system. So, thank you for your kind attention. Uh, Prof. Majaliwa, it is over to you. If colleagues have some questions, uh, I will be answering with uh, uh, Dr. Salako and uh, Dr. Uh, and Professor Asogbadro. Thank you. Yeah, th thank you very much. Uh, for, for the nice presentation. So colleagues, if there are questions, please <clears throat> raise your hand and we give you the opportunity to, to ask uh, the question. And uh, colleagues from uh, the team from Benin will be able to provide uh, the answer to your question. Thank you very much. Let's but, wait for, um, so let's start with Ben. Stop yes, Ben, go please. ahead. Please, Prof Majaliwa. Yes. Yes, he can stop sharing his screen and also uh, stop sharing the screen totally. Okay. Uh, and so, also the one who has the, the video on, maybe switch them off because of the connectivity. Okay. okay. Uh, so uh, can, can, we have, can we have the first person, Ben Mugula? Oh, thank you so much. I want to appreciate the presenter for elaborating on the different methods of evaluating our ecosystem services. Uh, but uh, I have about two questions. One, when we evaluate ecosystem services or agroforestry systems, are we intending to arrive at a certain monetary value or we are answering something else. That is one. Two, are these values perceived values? Are they exact values? And then what are the limitations of these methods? Because um, I saw in some of the case studies, there are certain services that were not able to be assigned any value and they were giving us zero, zero, zero. So in that case, can we say some of these are invaluable services and resources? And if that is the case, what does it mean with the methods that we use to uh, value these resources? And what would be the implication as far as validity of the outcome of the valuation is concerned. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Ben. Uh, can we get another another question? Yes, Zainab, Adam, go ahead, please. Yes, Adam, go ahead. So apparently, uh, Adam is not ready. Um, uh, meanwhile, uh, uh, Prof. Ashil and Tim, can you uh, address the Adam, issue? Could you hear me? Could you hear me? Yes, go ahead, please. Go ahead. Yeah. When talking about economic value in general, and especially when we talk about cost and benefit, generally, 
we don't consider labor because in most cases I'm from Sudan and in our situation they completely depend on family labor and family labor would not be estimated or not included as cost so by the end of the day when you calculate the economic cost you will find that the the the, the, the cost of labor is is not recognized because a um, farmer, all of the family members consume their time, consume their effort, doing the work. But by the end, when economists calculate this, they didn't calculate it and they consider it as zero cost. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Adam. So, uh, Adam, preoccupation is that uh, generally uh, the relative computate computation here does not include labor. Uh, in that case, uh, you may get uh, a, a good a good benefit, and yet uh, you would have been lower than that. So, uh, Prof. Ashil uh, and team, go ahead, please, to address some of those uh, issues. Yeah. Thank you, uh, dear colleague, for the questions. Uh, the very First question was about the, the, the value that uh, uh, that we get after the, the assessment. Is it, uh, is it that we want to, the, the objective here is to, to really know what the, the uh, uh, agroforestry, the, the indigenous tree are bringing to, to, to you in, in, in your systems. Uh, when, uh, they are into your system. What are they bringing? Are they are they giving? Are they adding value to to, to your system or not? If uh, you, you you want to know, you can go for for, for this kind of uh, of assessment to to know if you 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 need to intensify your 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 agroforestry system or if uh, the benefit that you are getting from uh, from, from the system is is lowering your income, so you, you will know how to manage your your agroforestry system. For example, if, if for example the the the, uh, the number of trees in your farm is for example decreasing your 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 yield, you can you can see uh, if there is a need to to remove some of them to to reduce the shade under your crop or not. But generally, those trees are, are bringing, uh, are adding value to, to, to the system. And if you don't do this kind of assessment, you, you, will, you may not know. And that is why I was saying that it is all depend on the things that you value in your system. When you have a, a, a complex system, what is important for for the um, for the the owner of the system? It is what he have to 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 put emphasis on. So uh, the, the the value give you uh, an idea of what the system is bringing to you, what the system is bringing to you, so that you can know that. If you have another land elsewhere where you are not already using uh, uh, this indigenous tree to in, in in the system, you can make a decision to add trees in, in those system. What are the limitation of uh, of uh, uh, this kind of uh, of assessment? I I was saying it's the it depends on the economic agent that is doing the, the, the work. Uh, what is very valuable for you may not be for another person. So depending on what you, you want to, to put, to, 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 to show, or depending on the objectives that you, you, you set for, for your study, your devaluation can differ. Devaluation can differ. So that is why it is important before to start 
to clearly define what you want to assess and choose appropriately the, the, the methods that you are going to use so that when somebody wants to criticize your work, say that, okay, you did not take into consideration this or that, you can clearly state it was because my objective was not that I want to look at that particular aspect, but rather on this one. It is true what you said about uh, the tables. There, there were a place where the value were, were zero, zero, because they put the emphasis on the um, value, uh, to giving the value of the, uh, the use value of the different components. And for the no use value, they, 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 they just leave it because they give, uh, they use the method of having the, 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 the price in the market. You know? So there are some things that you cannot price like that because it's not in the, in the market system like shade, for example of uh, the you cannot easily value the 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 uh, the pest control for example unless you 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 try to use indirect methods like uh, you will see when uh, uh, you have a a plot a, a control plot where the, the you don't have uh, indigenous tree and you will see how cost uh, how what is the cost of the damages of the pests in that uh, control farm, and you will compare it to to your indigenous uh, tree-based agroforest system and and make the difference. So that is why the, the figure over there was zero zero. The labor is. Most, most of the time is not uh, included in the, in the computation. It is true, but uh, you can also, when uh, using the, the regression methods, I think that you, you can try to include that. You, you can try to include uh, uh, those, uh, those value, uh, th those components, in your in your model, so that uh, it can be taken into consideration the, the the labor of the people of your family in the system can be taken into consideration while computing the economic value of uh, of uh, your agroforestry system. Thank you. I don't know if- for, uh, Thank you, doctor, for, uh, yeah. for that. Uh, we, we are almost there at four. So I will request that uh, Prof. Ashil um, start the second part of, the, of, of uh, uh, this training. Uh, if you have more questions, please uh, send them to the chat. And at the end, uh, the colleague will address them. Yes, Prof. Okay. Ashil, you are welcome to make you. microphone. This is uh, now up to Valet once again to share his screen and, and, and continue with the domestication aspect. As I, I, I told at the beginning, we change a bit. Instead of doing this tomorrow, we, we bring it back for today. And tomorrow, it is uh, the last day when I will come with some advices for the one uh, who is going for field assessment and so on. Then instead of uh, putting session seven, it should be session six now uh, uh, about the domestication of indigenous trees for improved and resilient agroforestry systems. Then uh, Dr. Valle, please go ahead for maximum one hour. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Professor. For Professor Achila Sobajo. Uh, good, I would say good evening, yes, to Professor Majaliwa, Professor Florence, and all participants. Um, I'm quite pleased to, to once again discuss with you how uh, we can facilitate 
uh, lead the training on the D session six that focus on the domestication of indigenous trees for improved and resilient agroforestry system. We, we, we have been talking so far of the diversity of indigenous trees. We talk about the uh, the morphological variations and the genetic diversity within these indigenous trees, the diversity of the ecosystem services they, they offer, and how this diversity or how these ecosystem services can be assessed, and even how they how we can put monetary value on those services. Do the domestication session that we will be discussing now is, is a, is a follow-up of all those sessions where we will discuss how in practice we can bring those trees from the wild to our farms. So the participant will be capacitated on the process of the domestication and how in practice this can be this can be this can be done so so the i i, I will just give quickly brief descriptions of this session so the main aim of this session is that by the end of it the participant will learn two tools that can help them efficiently contribute or lead the domestication of agroforestry tree species. Please, can you can you please switch off your mic? It's disturbing a bit. Thanks. And we 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 have four learning outcome here. From the participant, we will be we will be taken. We have four main learning outcome. The first is that by the end, the participant should be able to explain the concept of domestication. Second, they should also be able to describe the process of the domestication of agroforestry tree species, and also be able to undertake the assessment of the domestication status because uh, we'll be discussing of the process of domestication. So when you understand well the process of domestication, they should be able to state through an assessment the, the domestication status of a given tree if, if the tree is, is already going through a domestication process. And finally, able to undertake research needed in the domestication process or provide advice on research that is needed for, for the domestication along the, 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 the process. So as a matter of fact, the content outline okay, in line with this learning outcome is we have a first part that will deal with the concept and objective of domestication so that they get uh, they get uh, the right understanding of what domestication is and the objective of domestication and next we we will discuss with them the concept of ideotype idiotype I, I wish the concept of idiotype because uh, you cannot engage in a domestication process without uh, dealing with um, idiotype. So we will take them through this concept and how and um, how them. I mean, the understanding they should have of it. Uh, next to that, uh, we will take them through the process of agroforestry species domestication. What are the step of tree domestication in agroforestry system? And then how uh, to evaluate the status of the domestication process. And this is, I mean, these two, these two parts are, are linked. 
and finally discuss with them uh, the role of research in the process of domestication of agroforestry species. So from a, a pedagogical point of view, the, the mode of delivery, the teaching and learning materials, the mode of assessment uh, are not really different from the, from, from the one used in the, in the previous session. But the, here there are some literature that needs to be provided to them so that they prepare the session. Here we have selected six main documents or articles that address a number of concepts that will be going through soon. And if they read them before coming to the before coming to the session, that will really facilitate the the training uh, for you, but also uh, for for them. So we, as you know, they may not have enough time to read all this, but the one that are in red, uh, you are uh, you should stress and invite them to read at least those free papers or those free documents. Otherwise, leading the session may, may be difficult. So as a matter of fact, these assignments have to be given to them uh, before the beginning of the session. So these free papers, you, 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 you you provide you provide them with, with these three papers, and you ask them to read before coming. And you will see the the fifth one. They they, they will be asked to read chapter three. The, 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 it's it's the big document, but they will only read this chapter three, where they will gain uh, insight on the concept of domestication, the process of domestications, and and additional aspects. And for for instance, the concept of ideotype. They need to read the last paper, a paper by, by Robert Leakey and, and Page in 2006. So if you provide them with this article and stress and uh, invite them to read the, the three that are highlighted in red, uh, they will be uh, assigned to summarize the understanding that they have of the concept of domestication, why domestication is needed, I mean, the reason for domestication, and then the process of domestication. Next, they will also summarize the understanding of the concept of ideotype. And finally, make a comparison in terms of advantages and disadvantages of seed-based propagation and vegetative-based propagation of of trees so if they read the papers and their response to these assignments then this will make very easy the session because all we will be talking about are already in these papers or in this article so at the beginning of the session you may ask two or three of them that you pick randomly to summarize the understanding they have of, the, of domestication. So what is domestication? They will certainly give what they read in the, maybe in their own word, or maybe uh, may give a paraphrase of what they read in the paper. But here, it's the idea is just to make sure that they they get the main insight of what is domestication. So this is a broad definition of domestication. Domestication is sustained multi-generational relationship where human assume a significant degree of control over the reproduction and care of another group of organisms to secure a more predictable supply of resources from that group. 
This is the general definition. But when we come to our particular case of indigenous trees in agroforestry system, the group of organisms we are dealing we are dealing with here is our trees. And to make it short, domestication is like bringing the trees from the wild to home or to farms to make it simple. And particularly on tree domestication, it refers to how humans select, manage, and propagate trees. And here the human involved may be scientists, there may be civil authorities, there may be uh, commercial companies, forest dwellers, farmers, or farmer association. So you have to stress on these three keywords. Select, domestication implies selection. So we will have of that we have to select some some resources from the from the wild. We will see this in the next slide. And after selecting, they have to manage. And after managing, they also need to propagate. And that's why we also discuss about in we also discuss on propagation method in this uh, in this session with the with the participant. So this gives a, a broad definition of domestication. But what this involved in the particular case of tree, uh, I mean, of trees, particularly indigenous trees in agroforestry tree system. So domestication is also an evolutionary process. You see an evolutionary process whereby population of plants that are living in the wild are accustomed to human provision and control. It's like having a control over the development of the trees. And this development, this control is uh, does target a typical kind of product. So by, by taking them through this slide, you, you make sure that they understand the, the concept of domestication, what it means, and also from the reading, this will certainly facilitate the, the discussion. It's very important to start this part, the, the part of definition of domestication, by asking them what they, what they understood from the, from the reading material that you provided to them. And once again, if you feel that there are materials that are more interesting than the one we provided, feel free to, to add and, 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 give it, and, and give it to them. It's also, and this one is, is, is important, it's also a science-based process because identification, production, management, and propagation imply also imply research involve uh, scientific activities. So it's also a science-based procedure as we will see in the, in the next slide. So the objective of tree domestication in agroforestry system is to enhance the performance of the trees in terms of improved tree products, such as timber, if timber are the product that, that are sought, or if, or fruits or medicine or environmental services like carbon storage, or what we discussed yesterday, it could, it could also be the improvement or amelioration of cell fertility. So the domestication, domestication process targets a certain service. And the idea of the objective of the domestication is to improve that service by improving the performance of the trees. So by improving the performance of the trees, you improve the service that the trees the, that the tree deliver. And these services, as, as mentioned, there can be timber, can be fruit, it can be medicine, it can be vegetables, it can also be resin, it can be gum, uh, carbon storage, cell fertility, erosion control. Every service that we, we discussed about yesterday are eligible here. 
So while taking the tree from the Y, where we, where we are maybe assuming that the performance is, is, not, is not satisfactory, then we bring them and use a, a number of approaches to make sure that they perform better than in the than in than in the wild. So the, this is an interesting document uh, that highlights the uh, uh, how domestication can enhance uh, delivery of ecosystem services in agroforestry system. And this document is, is, is part of the literature that is provided to, the, to them among the, the three that we highlighted in the list of literature that they will read. So stress on these highlights when discussing with them, I mean, tree domestication can improve agroforestry functions, farmers' income, food, and nutritional security. And as we will see, the participatory domestication has, has had a source in enhancing adoption and agroforestry system because the domestication, I mean, domestication is, is a practice uh, which might can be adopted or not. So to make sure that and to, to make sure that farmers adopt the process, uh, I mean the domestication, we we need to stress on that the participatory approach of the domestication. Uh, is 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 better. We 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 will come back on on it in the in the next slide. Now, after completing with definition of what is domestication, we now move to the concept of idiotype. And once again, there was a paper that was shared with them that deals with the concept of idiotype of EDITA. So those papers really discuss on it and even and provide example. Remember, on the objective, we mentioned that domestication aims to enhance the performance of trees. So we are looking for some characteristic of the product from trees. For instance, if the this the, the service is, is food from the fruits, then we are expecting that the fruit, we are expecting the fruit to have some characteristic. It then means that in domestication process, we will deal with the identification of superior materials. So this concept of idiotype is well discussed in the, in, in the paper. And before starting also, the, the, before starting the definition of the concept of idiotype, please ask them to summarize what they understand from their reading. And they will provide, I mean, for those who will, who will take time to read, uh, I'm quite sure that they, they will provide the right answer. But if there are some aspect of it that uh, that were that were not, uh, I mean, brought out, you can you can stress on this. So, idiot, uh, idiotap mean here, uh, individual will desire trust. So you have a number or uh, define a a number of trust you are looking for in a particular tree that can be for the fruit, that can be maybe for the gum, that can be for the raisin or maybe for the vegetables you, you are collecting from the trees. We define the trees that we are, we are looking for, that we are researching. And then see the trees where this tree can be, can be found. And we, we often refer to the trees that provide those desired trees as elite trees or, or plus trees. So domestication then is usually concerned with the identification of these superior materials. And this raises a, a, a question. And please ask them this question. 
and they should be able to answer this question from the reading. How the superior mature trees can be identified? Especially, for instance, if you are looking for multi trait. For instance, if we are looking just for a sweet fruit, then it might not be difficult to get it. But imagine that we are looking for a tree that, a tree that provides big fruits, sweet, and colorful fruits. You see, the number of desired traits that we are looking for is increasing. And where this number, when the number of desired traits increase, you have, you, I mean, the chance of getting trees that fulfill all those digital traits then gets lower. So you ask them how this can be done and they will certainly reflect on, and this discussion will certainly allow you to, to leave them the, the main information or knowledge they, they, they have to keep in mind after completing the session on the concept of idiotype. So the, this paper is also among the, the literature provided to them, and it deals with the concept of, of um, idiotype. And this is a definition of idiotype. Of, uh, so just in, in summary is a, an ideal model phenotype, which encompass all the traits that you are you are looking for in a particular tree in a particular tree. So, how this can be identified? They, there are classical two ways of to deal with it. The first approach is to is to involve indigenous people. You see, you, you discuss with, with indigenous people who are really knowledgeable on, on those resources, and they, they can actually tell you, yes, these trees, this tree found in this place can provide a fruit with this characteristic. You see, they, they, they are able to tell you that, yes, this tree is, uh, this tree, the fruit from this tree is bitter, while the fruit from the, from the other tree is, is, is sweet. So this approach can be used. You see, and when you ask them how this can be done, certainly some of them will come up with, 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 with this proposition. So this is one first approach where you really involve indigenous people that have master knowledge of the resources in the in the in the environment and they will be able to identify the trees that give the best product but you know this this is based on on one could say subjective appreciation from uh, from people but can provide interesting insight in the, uh, in the course of the selection process the second technique is really based on quantitative approach, whereby you, you go in the field, you harvest some of the product, maybe you, in the particular case of the fruit, you harvest some, some fruit from many trees, and you measure some, you make some measurements on, on some quantitative characteristics that could be the size of the fruit, you, you can bring the, the fruit in the lab and make some analysis, for instance, to, to assess the, the nutritional value, the, the, the content in vitamin C, the content in, in minerals, the, the flavor. So you see, this is a quantitative assessment, which will take time. It's not just going and discuss with indigenous people whereby after maybe four hours of discussion, you can you can or you can already have interesting information. But here, you really need to go and and make some measure, some some lab analysis. But this is very scientific, where you get interesting information, and there is some statistical method that will be used to identify whether. Uh, I mean, the, the, that will be used to compare the, the trees because you harvest the fruit from many trees 
And based on the quantitative characteristics that you collected, you can make the comparison of the trees and identify the trees that, uh, that produce the best product. And this is usually done with some graphical representation. Uh, like this one, we, we call it a, a radar shot. It looks like a, a spider graphical representation. But as you can see here, there, there are several traits. You see here, we have the foot mass, the pulp mass, the skin mass, the, the flesh or juice mass, the, the nut mass, the shell mass, the kernel mass, and the oil content. So these are, for instance, some characteristics that uh, the author were interested in. And they, they, do, they did have some, uh, some individual from which they harvest the trees, uh, the fruits, and they measure all those parameters within the fruits. And then this is a kind of multivariate or multi multidimensional representation of those traits and allow you to identify the, the, the type or the individual that provides the or that, that provides with the with most of the characteristics you are looking. For instance, if we are looking for for individual we having fruit with high oil content, with high kernel mass, you can easily identify this individual based on this graphical representation. And the same also apply if you are looking for, for instance, particular trust in the in the foods. So the, this graphical representation is actually based on the on data that are collected with a very, uh, I mean, very straight and precise uh, scientific approach. The, the paper where this graph has been taken from is, is also uh, in the literature that we, that, that we provided. So this, you, you can also use it to, to read and get the maybe additional details and invite the student to, to read before coming to the session. So if, yes, the, 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 this is also the, a reference to the paper for, on this concept, where they use this concept of uh, idiotech to identify a uh, based on multiple trait, the, the, the idiotype of, uh, of marula, marula, which is a, a fruit tree, indigenous fruit trees uh, common in, in semi-arid and, and arid region in East Africa, in Eastern Africa, and even in, in, in Western Africa. So we, by going through this material with them and involving them in the discussion, uh, I think you will be able to, to give them the, the main insights on the concept of uh, idiotype. So after this, you can head to the process of domestication of agroforestry species. So they now know what is domestication. They know the objective of domestication. And then now they are now aware that domestication involve or also involves selection of interesting materials. So now we will discuss with them the process of the domestication. Uh, when going through the literature, the, there is debate on, on this, on, on the number of steps, but basically the, there are two pathways within the domestication strategy. And if they read the, the paper the, that you provided to them before the session, they, they, they will also be able to respond if you ask them the, those pathway. The first one is implemented on farm by farmers, by the farmers. So on the farm, the, the farmer bring the trees into cultivation themselves. They, you see, the, the, they can spare a number of trees in their farm, but most of the time, the individual that they spare 
they know that yes, they produce interesting products. So this is a process entirely led by, by, by farmer or, or on the farm. The second pathway is, 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 is a mix up where farmers are involved, but also scientific approaches are introduced through by providing some uh, by providing answer to some of the questions that the that will be raised by the farmers and that can speed the the process of the of the i mean of the domestication and particularly here the improvement of the of the tree and here in in, the, in this pathway researchers typically act as mentors mentor because uh, I mean the process is led by the farmers but researchers are just uh, they act as mentor providing some guidance to 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 the farmers so this participatory I mean and this is the the so-called participatory approaches because these approaches involve the farmers it also involves the the researcher and sometimes it can also involve the consumer. I mean, the final product that we are we are heading to, I mean, is 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 for some consumer, is for company. So they can also join the process, making it very participatory. I mean, making it very very participatory. And you have to stress on this, and this is why it is put in the in gold color. Because these participatory approaches will be the key motivation for the adoption of the final product from the, I mean, out of the process. Because if the process is only led by researcher, the final product might not meet the, the requirement or the expectation of the farmers, the expectation of the consumers or the expectation of the, of the companies. So when it's made, when the process is participatory, then the, there is a higher chance, a higher likelihood that the final product is adopted by, by the stakeholder. So please stress on this when you are facilitating the, the training. And those two pathways that we've just described, uh, that uh, I just talked about, are presented on this graph. I mean, these two figures are actually the same, just that they, they, they are highlighting complementing information. So how should you understand this, this graph? If you look at the, the one, uh, at your right side, you see on the top white tree species with commercial potential. So you identify a, a tree as a, an, an indigenous tree as very useful with a commercial potential, like baobab trees, like marula, like tamarind, uh, like some acacia that provide gum as commercial potential. So the two pathways uh, I just presented there, an improvement from management on farms that is basically led by farmers. And the second pathway is, is, is mainly led by science, by scientific research for essentially genetic improvement to make sure that the final product respond to the characteristic or the traits that we are looking for. So, the selection, so the next selection, you remember that domestication involves selection. So this selection is made by farmers and can be for domestic use. It can be for, for local markets. It can be for specific agroforestry system. It can be for low input farming. So there is always an objective for this selection. Is it for domestic use? Is it for local markets? And Depending on the depending on the objective, the the material to be to be selected will not be the will not actually be the same. You you are aware of the farmer of, of the farmer logic. So at this step at this phase, science can intervene 
assisting the farmers in identifying, I mean, the, the materials that uh, that is most, I mean, that is most suitable depending on the on the objective. And the second step is the participatory domestication with farmers. Again, the scientific research will assist by by breeding research to improve, for instance, the the yield, the I mean the profitability, the commercial, the high, I mean the commercial value of the final product. And at, by the end of the process, you you get an interesting product that can be used in agroforest. But this somehow simplify. I mean, graph of process uh, is not is not a matter of two years or three years. Sometimes it can take ten to twenty years. So when the process is led by farmers, uh, it does not really involve it, it does not involve many scientific research. It's just based on experience of the farmers. Uh, yes, these trees, the district provide the best fruits, and this is the fruits. This is the quality of fruit that is the the, the that is researched on the market. So, if the process is conducted by farmers, then it might not take long time. It's uh, it's estimated that this can be within five to ten years. They could come up with the selection of materials that satisfy their the needs. But when it's a process led by science, you see that there will be several experiments on stations, uh, and this will require a multi-year experiment to make sure that, yes, the, the result or the finding is, is, is stable, then it will need several years of research. And you know, farmers do not have time. They do not have time is a matter of investment. And that's why it is advised that the process is made participatory so that when the farmers are, are expressing some need, scientists are there to provide also a, a quick way of finding the solution to speed the, to, to speed the, the process. So the main information here is just to, to draw the attention of the participants on that. If it is a process that is exclusively led by scientists, it often takes a long time. And to make and to, to reduce the, I mean, to reduce the length of this process when make it participate with the farmers. Uh, you are sure that the end product that you get satisfy the, the needs of, of the farmers, the needs of the end user, the need of the consumers, and address all the, all the concern. So the, the, this, is, this is another illustration of the process, but here the main information you, 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 you need to leave to them or maybe to draw their attention on is that the process is iterative. You see here, it's, it's, uh, it's an eight step process that, the, that, that, that you described from exploration and collection of the resources from the wild to the final product and marketing. The process is iterative because uh, for instance, at the silviculture, uh, at the seventh step, you can realize that something is not working properly and you might need to come back at the first uh, at the first step that is going in the wild and maybe collecting another materials that maybe satisfy a particular uh, a particular objective or a particular expectation so the main focus of this slide is to draw the attention on the on the fact that the process is iterative is not a straight line process whereby you are going and then you will not come in you, you, you will not go back sometimes you make two steps forward and maybe and we need to make one step backward to make sure that yes you are you are doing a good job at that by the end the the final product that we will be delivered will uh, will be a consensual one and satisfy all the the needs. 
So this this is again an illustration of the of the domestication process. So the once again this paper was provided to them, but it's not um it's not among the three that we they are required to read. But if some of them read it, it will be it will be very interesting to uh, I mean for the discussion with them. So this the first step, the step zero is where the species is entirely wild. You see the trees in the wild and they are only collected when needed. You see, at this time, the, the species might not, might, might not right be of high have socioeconomic importance. It might not be threatened or so, something like that. But when the commercial value is, is proven and the, 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 there is business uh, already growing on it, then interest can be manifested and the process and the domestication process can start. And this will start with, for instance, sparing the trees on the farm, taking care of them. And farmer will start paying more attention to the to the to the fruit, taking care of them, weeding, protecting them against herbivores. So when farmers started doing this, then it showed that the, there is increasing interest over the tree, uh, over the tree species, and that a, a domestication process has already started. So if you take them through these processes, it suggests that at any time when you pick a given species and ask them, what is the status of the domestication of these species? They should be able to say, yeah, these three species, we are at the second step or we are, we are still at the third step, or we are already at the fifth step of the domestication process. And you see at the third step here, the farmer starts uh, discussing or mastering the, the reproductive biology. So he is knowledgeable on how the, the, the species reproduce, how it's a flower, uh, at which period, at which period is fruit? What is needed to make sure that it produces enough of fruit or enough of flowers? You see, and next, the step four: the species is cultivated and harvested using traditional practices. The the fifth step: the 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 farmers start adopting some specific criteria to select the, the, the trees or the plant that satisfy better the people needs. And this will depend on the market, on the market needs, because it's not only for domestic, the domestic use, but it can also be for market. And then the selection will, all, the selection will target the, the people need in the, in the, in the market. So you take them through this process, and then you can take example of three species from your own places. I mean, the most known three species and ask them from the knowledge of those species, uh, at which step of the domestication process we can, we, can, uh, we can assign them. And so based on the understanding that they have from this step, they will be able to, to respond whether if the, the process is still at the second step or at the third step, and you discuss and discuss all this with them. So it's now when you deal with this, when you complete this, remember we 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 said at the beginning that domestications involve propagation. Because when you select the materials that are interesting for you, you need to master the propagation. So the farmer needs to master the propagation of those trees to make sure that they are able to cultivate as they do for the annual crop, even though it will not be annual, because here we are we are working with trees and this can take five, 10, 20 years before getting, uh, before getting mature. So propagation is a very key component of the domestication process. And here, we, you need to, to stress on the two main way of propagating, the, of propagating species. The first one, which is seed-based propagation, 
And the second piece, the vegetative propagation and emphasizing or maybe stressing on the advantages and, and disadvantages of each, uh, I mean, of each type of propagation. Remember that seed-based propagation uh, is a propagation whereby through generation, the, the genetic material is not conserved because if you propagate by seed, then there will be crossover between genetic materials of individuals and the products that we have will not be as the same as the as the mother trees to make it simple but when you take vegetative propagation is this way of propagation that whereby you are sure to have exactly the same genetic materials through the generation but there are a number of disadvantages linked to these the vegetative propagations and and I'm pretty sure that all of you are aware of, of, of these disadvantages. The idea here is to, to, to bring the, the participants on the discussions on, on these two ways of propagating the species, the advantages and disadvantages of, of them. And there are some particular situation where vegetative propagation might become the only way of the propagation. I mean, for most of the trees that are domesticated, you, you will see that the, the propagation way that is adopted is uh, the vegetative propagation method because this ensures that the characteristic of the of the next generation, or maybe the, the characteristics of the product that you, you have are exactly the same as for the for, for the marble trees. And there are some particular cases where this propagation method uh, will, will, be, will, will be the one to use. For instance, you, you have the, the characteristic that you are looking for, for instance, large fruit size, sweetness, precocity, uh, are rare in the wild. So you have very few individuals on which you have this, the, you, you find this characteristic. So the only way for you to make sure that you, you, you will have those characteristics is by uh, is ensuring a clonal reproduction. So you will, you will necessarily need to, to use this method. And it might also happen that the, 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 it's difficult to get the seed of some species. You see, there are some species that do not flower or fruit every year. The, the, the flowering and fruiting is really sporadic. And you, you cannot rely, you cannot really rely on seed to propagate them. Then you, 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 you will need to, to use a vegetative propagation, vegetative propagation method. So the idea here is to discuss with them the particular biological or context specific situation that can lead you to opt for the vegetative for the vegetative propagation. And one of the advantages of vegetative propagation is that it reduces the time to flowering and the time to fruiting. You know, there are some species, if the products you are looking for are the fruits, there are some tree species that need, for instance, 10 to 15 years or even 20 years and even more than that to fruit if they were propagated by, by seed. But using some vegetative propagation method, you can reduce the time to flowering. You can reduce the time to fruiting. And this is some characteristics that farmers are looking, uh, are looking for in the process of domestication. So these aspects need to be stressed on when you are given the when you are given this this uh, I mean this session and one additional reason to, reason to all for vegetative propagation is that for some species the seed have very short viability and it's quite difficult to to store and and to store for a longer time the the, the seed so the vegetative propagation method that we were talking about 
uh, are those ones that uh, that you you already know the cutting, the grafting, the copying, the the marketing. And here, you can just ask them to make difference between those four the, those four uh, method uh, known as propagation as macro propagation vegetative method. So because sometimes the there may be confusions on the on this method, the cutting, the grafting, the copying, the marketing, even though there are clear differences between, uh, between them. So invite them to, to participate in the in the training, in the lecture, by asking them to give what, what are the main differences between these four uh, vegetative propagation methods. So and these slides are just to make illustrations of, of this vegetative propagation method. The graphing that is illustrated there, the, the, the layering, as, as, as you can see. And whenever possible, where you are doing this training, you can, make, you, you can, you can go for a practice where they really practice the grafting where they practice the learning, they, they are not really difficult to, to implement. They are not really difficult to implement. It will be very useful and advisable to, to make such practice. Uh, obviously, after, make, after presenting the, the slide. So this is, this is cutting. Uh, as you can see, and, and in addition to this macro propagation method, there, there is also micro propagation, micro propagation, which is also a vegetative propagation method. And this is basically done, and this is basically done in laboratory. But to require, uh, I mean, specific equipment, uh, which might not be available. This is often led by some companies uh, or laboratories. So it's not a process that really involves farmers, but the macro propagation can be easily adopted by farmers because they are not difficult to apply. The, it's just required that the good materials are identified and then the farmer can apply. But concerning the, the micro propagations, it is really requires some materials, some, I mean, some environments and a, a very specific expertise. And most, most of the time, this, this approach is used by some companies that produce the, the seedlings, the young individuals, and they sell those young individuals to the to the farmers. And the, the, this is, for instance, used for the date palm, for the date palm in 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 arid zone, in Arabic zone. So again, the illustration of the micro propagation micro propagation method. Something very important. We just, I mean, when discussing with the participants, with the advantage and disadvantage of seed-based propagation and vegetative propagation, you will certainly come up with the point that a vegetative propagation narrow genetic diversity. And remember, when the Professor Ashil Asobajo was presenting in the session two, the Genetic variation, the morphological variation is the basis of plant adaptation to environmental hazards, and particularly to adapt to climate, to climate change. So even though vegetative propagation can be seen as effective way to speed the process of domestication, they should be aware of the fact that the natural genetic diversity, the morphic diversity that is nature should be conserved. And remember with Professor Asobajo, we talk about a situ conservation, we talk about in situ conservation, and we also talk about Sika situ conservation, depending on the specific context of each species. So this is something very important to stress on it because uh, when the trainer will go back and maybe start their own businesses installing uh, agroforest, uh, 
Uh, if this is not very clear in the mind, then they will contribute to the depletion of the genetic resources. So please stress on this and engage them on, this, on the approaches that can be used uh, to, to save this genetic variability of our indigenous trees. You, you can also refer to the, to the slide or Yes, to the slide of Professor Ashil Asobajo on on the on the conservation strategies to to illustrate this. Now, on the role of research, as we as we saw in the process, we may need scientists. You see, and this is important to draw their attention on. For instance. What is the best vegetative propagation method? For instance, would we go for curtains? Will we go for grafting? Or will we go for layering? Or will we go for micropropagation? Not all species are suitable for all those methods. Some method will work for some species, and other might not work for other species. And to make this, to provide evidence for this, we need scientific research. You see, again, if we need to, if for instance, we, we need to know the, how important is the genetic diversity or how important is the, is the genetic variation, how important is the, uh, the, the diversity, this need to be assessed using very sound scientific approaches. And this is where we need researchers to be involved in the process. So we, here we, we advise to engage them to think or to reflect on what scientists can bring in the domestication process. And certainly you will go through the, the 14 uh, the 14 heading that are, that are mentioned here. The idea here is to, to draw the attention on the fact that the domestication process is not a, a one stakeholder, uh, uh, I mean, project is not a, is not a one stakeholder uh, property. It, it is a process that engage many stakeholders, but researcher particularly has a specific, uh, I mean, role to play. For instance, uh, how the trees are pollinated. You see, what are the pollinators? Uh, what is maybe, what is the particular environmental condition that are needed for, for maybe a, a fruit to flowers, a, a, yeah, for a tree to flower? Uh, or maybe what are the particular conditions uh, needed for uh, to make sure that the, the the pollination is effective. For instance, if you have a tree that is uh, dioecious, that is you, you have a tree that is female and you have a tree that is that is male, then the female and the female and the male tree need to be in a certain environment and relatively close to each other. Then there might be a minimum distance needed between those, the, I mean, those two individuals to make sure that they cross pollinated, that they cross pollinate. So research is needed to advise on the minimum distance that is needed between the female tree and the male tree to make sure that the pollination is effective and to continue the, the, the reproduction, the reproduction scene. So discuss with them. The, 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 the diverse role that researcher can play in the domestication process. And again, these are uh, some knowledge in the domestication process where support from researcher is, is needed. It's not, it's not it's, uh, these are just indicative, uh, additional point can, 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 also, can also be uh, be provided when you are given the lecture. And something very important uh, you can also stress on is here, with the context of climate change, with the increasing drought, uh, increasing soil salinity, we need to know what 
are our indigenous tree species? What are, what are the provenances that best adapt to salinity, that best adapt to drought, that best adapt to attack by pest? And this, we need research. It's only by doing research that we can come up by the identification of those provenances or those trees that better adapt to this environmental stress. And we might also need to make some genetic and some genomic improvements to, to make sure that the, the final product that we, we are researching satisfy our need. And again, the researcher will play a very important role in, in this process. And then you will finish by providing some case studies. And these case studies can be given to them as, as talk. And uh, I, 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 we just give these two, two case studies, Pronus, uh, Pronus africana. You, you, certainly do, you certainly know these species in Eastern and Central Africa. The species uh, is now uh, on the appendix two of, of, of CITES, which is the list of species that are, uh, that is, uh, for which exploitation is prohibited. So the species uh, has become rare and even endangered. And the only way to make, to make it use sustainable is to engage, to engage the domestication process. And several work, several initiatives, several domestication initiatives have been conducted on this species. And you can use it as a case studies and maybe give, give it as a group work where the participant will come and give talk on, on the diverse experiences in the different countries. And a second example is this species, Dra Dracoides idilis, in, in Central Africa, uh, especially in Cameroon and also in West Africa in Nigeria. Uh, which is also been domesticated. Uh, there has been much in the domestication approaches and step in this species. So the, depending on where you are, you might have other examples. For instance, there is the case of baobab. There is the case of the she tree. So you can contextualize those case studies to make sure that the, the participant gets the, the insight and the main knowledge, the main uh, capacities and abilities that we, we are expecting them to get by the end of this training. So that will be all for this session six. Thanks for your kind attention. Uh, your questions, comments, and suggestions are welcome. Thank you. Yes, thank Professor you, Professor Majaliwa. Yeah. Yes, Professor yes. Um, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Doctor, for the presentation. Uh, so uh, I've seen Ben. I think this should this should have been an old uh, an old hand. Ben, do you still have a, a question to ask? Oh yes. Hello, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Quickly. Thank you so much. I want to uh, thank the presenter. Uh, just what I wanted to ask. And now, in the, it's good you have highlighted the need for studying the genetic diversity of a particular species before we get the superior provenances. And I think that is very important. Now, we have a, a particular species in East Africa, which is uh, Osiris lanceolata, that is a sandal, East African sandal. We realize that it has got a lot of potential for uplifting our people's livelihoods in terms of uh, economic value. And now I, I don't see a lot of efforts uh, being put towards uh, domestication of such a very useful species, especially in the arid areas and semi-arid areas where it survives. And then it's also listed under appendix two of sites, just like Prunas Africana, which gives us chance to make sure we improve so much on it and then we encourage our people to go in for uh, domestication. So what is happening is that there is a now an effort that is coming up to in, introduce uh, another species from other countries like India, 
and Australia, that is Santalam, at the expense of uh, promoting what we already have. And now when we keep on introducing the other species, which is already well-researched, well-developed, I see a lot of uh, implication on killing the research capacity for our indigenous species, which we have not yet explored very well, and even our farmers have not been sensitized. So now, in efforts to promote domestication of our indigenous species as Africans, could we say that we also need policies for particular species that have got a lot of value for domestication so that we can convince our governments to focus on those species. I'm, I'm excited with what is happening in, this, I think, Central Africa, those case studies that have been given. But how I wish we could also have uh, a specific emphasis given to policymakers to make national tree domestication strategies for priority species. Thank you so much. Yes, Francis. Uh, yes, yes, Prof. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, uh, I've been attending from the field somewhere in Aswa catchment. Uh, but of interest to me uh, is the nutrient uh, dynamics in uh, in tree management, domestication, and propagation. Uh, I would have loved uh, 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 to know a lot in that regard in as far as some researchables have revealed. Uh, thank you so, so much. Yes, uh, uh, is there any other question? I see someone, is it Florence? Is it yes, a real Florence? Florence? Yes. Go ahead. This is, Go ahead. This is Florence. I had put my question in the in the two and a. Um, we are talking about domestication of the forestry. Uh, I'm just wondering for my own uh, appreciation because we are talking about climate smart agriculture and climate change. Uh, how does this domestication impact? or on climate resilience or adaptation or mitigation, whatever that is, would be good to get a sense of that. Or is it that the domestication is better than if I didn't domesticate and use the things that I'm picking from elsewhere? Uh, so what is the relationship? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I think a team, uh, uh, Ashil and team could, uh, could start answering some of those questions. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Majaliwa, and a very big thanks to colleagues for, for the question. Yes, they, they are all very, very interesting questions. And starting from the first one, uh, I'm also really concerned with the with this introduction of a species, a species from elsewhere, whereby it's known that locally you you have uh, an indigenous tree that provides uh, somehow the same the the same product, and this is where we need the policymakers also to act because that species that you 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 are mentioning is is part of our diversity. You see, it's part of our diversity and we need to protect our indigenous resources. Indigenous resources because they are often mostly well adapted to our environmental condition. And then most, sweet, most suited for uh, mitigation and adaptation program. And this, this also linked to the, to the question of uh, Dr. Florence. I mean, domesticating our indigenous trees will enhance 
this adaptation and mitigation of climate change because those species are well adapted to our environmental condition and they are native from our regions and with less risk of becoming in, invasive, you see? So I, I, I don't know much, I don't know much about the, these two species, but it, it, it really shows the need of something to, to be done from policymakers. And you know, in our, in our countries, if there is not enough pressure on policymakers, on policymaker, they do not really get, I mean, a, I mean, concern with, with, with this subject. Maybe the, there's much money being I mean, coming from the exploitation of these uh, introduced species. Then locally researcher and stakeholder need to work to make the indigenous trees maybe come in or maybe perform as, as good as the species that is being introduced. So even though there might be a work to be done by, by different local stakeholders, we really need that policymaker take action that preserve our diversity. Because there might be a risk of getting rid of this indigenous tree species, because if they share the same environment, the introduced species share the same environment with the indigenous trees, there might be a risk of these indigenous trees to become extinct. And I, you even mentioned that it is already on the appendix of, of, of CITES, showing that it's already threatened. So if there is a domestication program on, on that species, this will provide resources to local farmers and there will not be much effort to grow that species because it's well adapted and it's well adapted and on the local environment. So there is work to be done from the side of, uh, of policymakers but also from local stakeholders that are using and, and valuing that, uh, I mean, that product. Th that is the comment I can provide uh, to uh, regarding this question. Uh, on the nutrients dynamic, yes, this is one of the, the, this has been a central issue in the domestication process because uh, studies has shown that, for instance, the selection process often targets on specific characteristics and then overlook other characteristics. For instance, if I'm looking for a, a fruit that have higher content in vitamin C and, and iron, then I will overlook to other, I, I mean, to other nutrients. So the selection will mainly focus on those two products and uh, on those two nutrients. And by doing this, uh, this, I mean, by doing this, the final product that I'm getting uh, might not cover all the, div the diverse nutrients that may be needed for a particular purpose. This is one point. The second point is, we mentioned the vegetative propagation that can be used to, to reduce, for instance, the time to fruiting or maybe the time to flowering for especially trees that take long time to fruit. There are some evidences that when you, look, when you reduce the time to fruit, then you also reduce the quality of the product. And I remember, I can't remember exactly the, the figures, but I, the, the, there was a newspaper two, two, two weeks or three weeks ago that showed that the nutrient content of the fruit has been reduced, uh, is five, is, yes, it's five to 10 times less today than before. 
you see and this is this is quite challenging for for the domestic for, for for domestication how to make sure that through the domestication we we keep as much as possible the quality of the of of, of the product but this is this is actually a, a good a, a good question and these are issues also that can be discussed with the with the participant when we are facilitating this session and and training on on domestication and finally how domestication contribute to how the domestication uh, contribute to climate adaptation and and resilience I, 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 like i was saying strategies that are based on indigenous trees are more efficient because those trees are most and well adapted to our condition than trees that come from uh, I mean, don't trees that come from from other places. So when the domestication is based on the local indigenous trees, then you enhance your your resilience. But if you base it, for instance, on species that are not native from your region, for instance, exotic species. Uh, they might be adapts, but they can disrupt the ecological system because the indigenous trees have, I mean, have been, I mean, have developed and grown and thrived the time in an ecological system, and this system is stable. But when you introduce a, a new organism, a new, a new species in the system, it disrupts the system. And they are likely to come either this the system collapse or likely if you are if you are lucky enough the the this the system evolve but likely it will disrupt the system and might take time to 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 become stable. So the link that can be made with the I mean we, that can be made between domestication and uh, adaptation and mitigation of climate change effort, uh, and additionally the resilience is to base this domestication on our indigenous trees. And by doing this, you are sure to not disrupt much the, the ecological system and make it then more resilient. That would be my, my comments and perspective of the of the of the questions uh, additional points or maybe suggestion from the participant are are welcome okay doctor i think we have gone by 17 minutes uh let people uh put down their questions uh, tomorrow we start at uh, three so we'll start with those questions uh, uh, Dr. Florence, do you have any word for closing the meeting today? Okay, uh, to thank participants uh, for being uh, here uh, for this third day. There are so many interesting things coming up. Uh, and I know that uh, as we go along, we shall be able to learn a little bit more and customize what we have learned based on the uh, discussions that have been taking place. Thank you very much. We are preparing to have an evaluation uh, of this uh, training uh, and that will help us get feedback um, on how best we can improve it even before we, we um, roll it out in the different institutions to be offered. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Ashil and the team. Uh, for a very good job that you have done. And thank you very much, Professor Majaliwa, for the coordination, as well as thanking the participants for their participation and joining us. Please join us tomorrow at 3 p.m. Uh, to have the last session in this module. Thank you very much. Thank you, and bye. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you.